Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a natural log equation or maybe a non-standard equation because we have x added to ln x. Anyways, we have x plus ln x equals 1 minus e all over e. And we're going to be solving for x values. So we're going to talk about a couple of different things here. And I'm going to show you a graph at the end which kind of explains what is going on. Great, so this is a non-standard equation because we have the log function along with the polynomial x and they're kind of mixed up. So we can't just solve this equation like a polynomial or just logarithmic, it's non-standard, so we have to use a special approach. And that special approach is actually a special function. So let's go ahead and talk about that function for a little bit and then maybe when we get to it, and then we'll just uh, go ahead and apply it. So, what do you do when you have x plus ln x? So as a general principle, anytime you see x plus, x plus ln x equals a constant, always do e to the power that thing. But first of all, I can go ahead and separate this into two fractions. Write it as 1 over e minus 1. So we're going to do the following. We're going to do e to the power both sides. So in other words, if a is equal to b, then e to the power a is the same thing as e to the power b. Make sense? Okay. I hope it does. That's what we're going to do now. Let's do it. e to the power x plus ln x equals e to the power, what's on the right hand side? 1 over e minus 1. I wanted to separate those two things because I'm going to use the laws of exponents or not laws, properties of exponents or rules. And this is how it works. When you have a to the power m plus n, you can write it as a to the power m times a to the power n. When you have a to the power m minus n, you can write it as a to the m divided by a to the n. And if you use these properties backwards, you probably know it backwards forwards and backwards. It means when you multiply two powers with the same base, you add the exponents. When you divide, you subtract the exponents. Make sense? And we have both. So let's go ahead and separate these. e to the x times e to the ln x equals e to the power 1 over e divided by e to the power 1, which is e. Great. And again, at this point, you can guess and check your work, but we're going to talk about a special function, so let's proceed with this. Now, why did I do this, first of all? Why am I doing e to the power when I have x plus ln x? For this very reason, this gives you e to the power ln x, which can be written as x. Isn't that great? So by definition, the exponential function when raised to the power ln x, it gives you the x back. So they're kind of like inverse function in that sense. Make sense? Okay, I hope it does. Now, from here we get e to the x times x, but I want to write it as x times e to the x. Because, like I said earlier, we're going to talk about a special function. Okay, great. What about the right-hand side? Well, the right-hand side is e to the power 1 over e divided by e, but I can also write it as 1 over e multiplied by e to the power 1 over e. So let me rewrite what we have. x times e to the x equals 1 over e times e to the power 1 over e. And I know at this point you're like, oh, come on, stop beating around the bush. We already got the answer. Yes, we did. You could clearly see the answer, but I still want to apply my special function, which is called Lambert's w function. Okay? So the name of the function is Lambert's W. You can go ahead and find some information online. Uh, Wikipedia, you know, as a really good page. It kind of gives you some of the interesting features of the Lambert's W function. But what is Lambert's W function? How is it defined? Well, Lambert's W function is basically defined as the inverse function of x e to the x. So if f of x is defined as x e to the x, then its inverse is defined as Lambert's W function. Now, how do you express that, right? I mean, 
looking at this equation doesn't make much sense except for the fact that you replace f inverse with w, right? It's just a naming convention. But if you think about it carefully, with inverse function, if a function is invertible, of course, you have to talk about a certain interval on which it's invertible. It has to be a bijection, so on and so forth. But to keep a long story short, if we kind of switch these around, we get the following. F inverse of x e to the x equals x. So we're kind of talking about a function whose input is x e to the x and whose output is x. And that is exactly what Lambert's w does. So it takes this as an input and then the output becomes x. Make sense? So it kind of extracts the x in this expression. So let's go ahead and go back to our expression one more time. x e to the x equals 1 over e times e to the power 1 over e. Now I'm going to go ahead and w both sides. And when I w both sides, I'm going to get the following. This is going to give me x. Now on the right hand side, it may not be very clear. So if you want to replace 1 over e with c, so that you can write it as w c times e to the c, and hopefully you see that that is equal to c. Hopefully you see what I see. But c is 1 over e, so x becomes 1 over e from here. And obviously, in this equation, you probably noticed that, okay, x becomes, if x is 1 over e, then we do get a true equation. Make sense? Okay. Here's a million dollar question. Is that the only solution? That's what we got to check. And so we're going to talk about some properties of another function, which is the original one. So let's go ahead and take a look at our original function, and let's not call it f of x because I already used f of x. Well, you could, but anyway, let's just call it g of x. We have a lot of letters, right? And when you're done with the uh, letters in the English alphabet, you can use Greek, you can use other l alphabets, and then you can just use subscripts, and there's going to be, you know, millions and millions of variables. I don't think you're going to need that many. But anyways, so... What kind of function are we looking at? We said that, okay, if this is equal to 1 minus e over e, we ended up with x equals 1 over e. Let me also show you here why that works. Because if you think about it, this is 1 over e minus e. And if x is 1 over e, then ln 1 over e is, is going to look like this. So 1 over e plus ln 1 over e is 1 over e plus ln e to the power negative 1. And that negative 1 is moved to the front and we get 1 over e minus ln e, which is 1, so 1 over e minus 1. That's where it comes from. That's how I kind of thought about this problem, came up with this idea. Easy. So if you use x equals e squared, you come up with another equation, or 1 over e squared, you just come up with another problem. All right, so 1 over e is a solution, but is that the only solution? How do we check? So we kind of look at this function from a calculus perspective. What is that supposed to mean? x is an increasing function, ln x is an increasing function, so their sum is always increasing? Yes, that's true. But let's go ahead and differentiate it to see why. The derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of x, ln x is 1 over x. Now, if x is positive, this is positive, and x is positive because for ln function, x must be positive. Make sense? g prime is always positive, which means g is increasing. And if a function is increasing, it's only going to intersect the horizontal line at a single point. And as you can see on this graph, the only solution is going to be at x equals 1 over e. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.